Breath is breath And death is death No respect There's nothing left These are Make it a little more homey How you doing Keith? What's going on? I'm, I'm doing well sir, how are you today? Awesome, where are you? I, I'm from India of course I'm from sorry, Phil. But Where are you right now? India No, but what city? Uh, I live in uh, the deep south, deep most of the Indian Ocean. Wow, man! <laughs> Amazing. So this is this is why the internet is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then absolutely. And get bad, and then when you have bad reception and stuff, then it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you guys doing today? Am I, am I wait? Am I clear? Because you yeah. you sound broken up just a little bit. So I'm going to concentrate with my hearing and make sure that I, I'm catching all the things you're yeah. saying. Sure. Okay. So it's going good, man. Great. It's, it's, a, it's a good day. It's another day for me in Hollywood. Well, and I'm not in Hollywood. I'm outside of Hollywood. But it's another day. Uh, I get to make music and, uh, and, and then talk about music. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. So... Uh, you and Kurt worked together last year on work for Rock Hall, an EP, great EP, amazing work from you guys. So would you like to tell me a bit about the songwriting and production behind this EP? Wow. You're, you're diving in there right away. <laughs> diving in hard, rock hard with bringing that up to everybody. Uh, I, I'll, I'll chime in real quick and then Phil can elaborate. But when we write tunes together, the first, the first song we did together was Have a Cigar. Obviously, we didn't write that, but we arranged it the way we wanted to. And then after that, when we shot that video, we decided we were going to start writing together. When I had, uh, came out to uh, L.A., I had written with a different writing partner. But Phil and I hit it off so well that uh, I said, let's try to write a song. So on that EP, the first song we ever wrote together was Back at the School. And... I usually write lyrics and thoughts, or I might make a voice memo or whatever on what I'm thinking. And I like to get things out of my brain. It's like therapy for me. And I was tired of reading negative stuff on the internet and people putting people down and reading about all these suicides and deaths and how mean people were. And Phil and I both grew up about the, at the same time, not about, but at the same time in different places. And we both do the same things when people would take care of their differences in the back of the school if you were mad at somebody. And you couldn't bully people without having to do it to their face. So that's the first song we ever wrote and we did with back of the school. Then I think, Phil, if I'm, we probably did Only Time Will Tell, not much further after about how you know it's pretty obvious what that's about life can change in different directions and only time will tell what's going to happen to you and we just kept writing and uh and that's how uh, we do it i write the lyrics i send them to phil he does his genius uh arranging and guitar work and then we send it to chris lord algae to sprinkle the fairy dust on. so you want to elaborate on that phil i think you nailed it okay yeah uh, People ask me why, you know, because I've worked with so many people before and I play with Bon Jovi and I got to flex in the drills of what I'd undertake another in my life. But uh, I'd never heard anybody do what Kurt does. And uh, I'm always about branching out and doing different things. And uh, it's a kind of situation where it, anything goes with this band, you know? I'm, my guitar playing is off the leash. Um, my uh, creative uh, scope is broadened because, and it's funny because when I'm writing for the drill, if anything pops into my head, it becomes a drill song. But when Kurt sends me lyrics, I I don't write it like it's a drill song. I write it like he sends me lyrics and I look and I put something. Before I know it, there's a song, and that song wouldn't exist if Kurt didn't send me those. So it's just really amazing. I feel blessed to be able to create the way I create. And then when I send stuff to Chris and Kurt, and they're like, holy shit. Well, there it is. <laughs> it's kind of like, I've never been shut down. So you have three completely different brains all on the same page. 
so for me, that's an exciting uh, journey, you know? Amazing, amazing. And you guys are working on more music this year. So what's the current plan for you guys? We don't stop, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we're not to, we're talking on the phone. Um, yeah, we're, we wanted to try to get an album out later this year but we're going to continue to tour on work hard rock hard it's such a, a great opening ep for what we're doing and we are putting an out a full-length album together but we're continuing to evolve as a team and we were as, as a matter of fact i'm back in ohio right now that's where our my, my studio is and where we lead our camp is is in cincinnati um, when we're all together but i was just in la as i am frequently and Phil and Chris and I were at Mix LA in the studio together last week. And we really want to take our time and make sure this big first full length album kicks you right in the ass. So we're uh, working hard on it. We've got the music. Uh, it's just a matter of refining and picking what songs we want to do out. We have probably have 30 to 40 songs that we've wow. already put as a team. So uh, a lot of work, but we owe it to all of you. To make sure it's our best work when we put it out so we were just together last week we'll get together here and i'll get together there with them in october and uh any time of the year and it'll be coming here pretty soon so wonderful wonderful and next month september you are headlining along with tesla in texas so how does it gonna be and how prepared are you guys to be on a tour with tesla oh we're stoked man we uh We'll be playing with a great band. It's got great fans. It's got, you know, right in our wheelhouse, rock and roll. Uh, we're doing three House of Blues, Dallas, Houston, and New Orleans. We're going to do the Aztec Theater in San Antonio and a couple it. of event centers in Midland and Lubbock. So it's, uh, we're very excited. I can't speak, speak, I know I speak for Phil. He's, we're, we're, we're pumped to do it. We've got some other cool things coming after, but uh, yeah, we can't wait to get together next week and head on the road and, and hit it with Tesla. So. Wonderful. Wonderful. And any international plans on the touring part? That's a tough one. Yeah. It seems to be hard to get across the water to go anywhere lately. And because I, you know, I see a lot of bands that are trying to do it and a lot of bands that announce shows and then cancel shows because either there's been a, a crazy uh, movement of inflation happening, uh, getting so expensive that I have booked, they're already canceling um, or you can't get a bus or it's too expensive to get a bus or there's just so many things. Um, obviously, we want to take this message all over the world. Um, it's just we got to do it right and we got to wait till it's more feasible. That's our yeah. situation. Wait, Keith, you have a great smile. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I don't know. I get that a lot, but I've been noticing your smile. You got a good smile. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up. Yeah, I can, I can <laughs> tell you're a very kind, nice dude, man. Good smile, okay. man. But Bill hit it right on the head. I mean, as we continue to grow, going overseas will become more realistic. Um, I see all the analytics of who's listening to our music and we're, we've got a lot of people overseas that are jumping on board and discovering us. So it'll come in the future, but it'll come at the right time. And, but not because we don't want to be there. It's just, it's all, all the, everything has to align correctly. So. Well, you know, that happens with every band. Even when I was playing with Bon Jovi back in 2013, and I'm Greek, so, you know, a lot of people are like, how come you're not coming to Greece? And don't you like Greece? You're in Greek, why aren't you coming here? And I'm like, well, it's more, it's more political than people believe, you know, like, especially in 2000, Greece was terrible. There's no way that the country could even afford a stadium show. So, that, but I mean, that's, I mean, you don't get into it like that, but people get offended. Like, hey, man, how come you're not coming to Brazil? Hey, man, how come you we're doing our best. <laughs> you know, we're doing our best. We, we want to we do yeah. or, You know, to take your music to another country and play for people that want to see you, that's the most amazing feeling in the world. Why wouldn't we want to do it? So if we're not 
there's a huge reason, you know. So we're 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 all working on it. Everybody's working. Yeah, it's it's not that we don't want to. It's just a matter of time. And also, remember, our band is coming up out of a period of COVID where a lot of the shows that are on the road right now are makeups from two years ago. So it'll Thank start taking itself out in the next year or two. So. And Kurt, you have recently starred in the movie Hellbilly Hollow. So how is this thing happen? And how do you feel about coming to the big, big screen? Oh, I've been, I was, I've had a couple small roles on the big screen that led to me wanting to do Hellbilly Hollow. I did, uh, I got ca uh, cast in Trading Paint with John Travolta in 17. That movie's been out for a few years. And then I was in the, the Halloween sequel to the original, Killed by Michael Myers, and which led to me wanting to do my own franchise. So I shot Hellbilly Hollow. Uh, it's been almost three years now, but it was shot and it was, I felt it was shot so well. But then the hardest part of putting out a great movie is the post-production and making sure you bring it all together right. So... I took it on as a labor of love and I'm so stoked, man. It's done now. The trailer kicks ass and we're working on the poster right now. And we've got poor um, folks behind it that are going to be taking it to, to a different um, studios to partner with for distribution. I've already written Hellbilly Hollow 2, the sequel, because it's going to be a franchise and it's crazy. And I love, I just love it, man. I love, I'm creating a horror character that, I can go and totally leave who I am, this mellow, chill, deep voice dude, and create different accents and voices and just act like this crazy man and just really let out a lot of uh, probably stress and tension I've built up over the years. So I love it, man. I can't wait for people to see it. And then it's, it's really killer. I'm but excited. I saw the trailer last week. And I was like, yeah. no, that's a movie I want to see. So when your buddy does a movie and you're like, I hope it's good. I mean, I saw the trailer and I legitimately, genuinely want to see it. Which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Bill, good trip. <laughs> and we got of our tunes on the soundtrack. So that's pretty huge too. Yeah. The soundtrack of yeah, seven yeah. Of, our, of our tunes. Some new ones you mm -hmm. haven't heard are on the EP. Um, uh, we also have a couple other artists on the soundtrack with us too. So stay tuned. It's going to be killer, man. Awesome. Awesome. Too. And uh, would you like to tell me how you and Phil, who was actually on Bon Jovi, got together and how this collaboration really happened? Well, I took a, a, a demo uh, of my original songs out to LA right before the end of night end of 19 beginning of 20 and I, my manager at the time i wanted to remix it because i still wasn't happy with it because i'm anal like that and uh, i was just like i still feel like this is you know not where it needs to be and he had a list of uh engineers mix engineers to take it to one being chris lord algae and he's like i don't think chris lord algae will give you the time of day but reach out to him and see so he calls him and COVID had just hit and uh he got a whole he responded and uh he listened to it and he said yeah I want to mix this project and he got into all the tunes that was you know where they were at that stage in my career and he loved my voice and the way I sound and took me under his wing and mixed that original um album of of songs and then that summer he goes, I want, I had to go out on a little promo thing for my former artist name. Um, and uh, he said, when you get back, I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this little uh, cover you and Ben were thinking about doing called Have a Cigar, which I had no interest really in doing. I wasn't feeling the vibe. And I come back and he's working on this thing and arranging it the way he wanted it because we never want to do a cover and we want to and do it the way the band does it. We want to do it our interpretation of their great art that they put out. And uh, I come back and I listen to this guitar solo and it's that guy, you know, who I can't mm -hmm. see right now. It, 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 he shreds it. I mean, it's like incredible. And he can tell you a little story behind that solo. But then 
we decided to shoot the music video for it because we were all vibing and phil x and i met the first day on that shoot of uh, have a cigar video that's on youtube and like i said earlier we just started writing together and april of 2021 uh, we, I, I said i gotta have a chat with you man and we talked and and uh i just said look we got to figure this out and come together because this music's too unique and original and it will not do it uh, any justice for me to go out with another guitar player that's trying to sing like you or play like you and a uh, little persuasion and phil says all right let's do it and we help each other we're buddies first and foremost and we're family men and we want to take care of each other and uh, we're great friends and i think a lot of all of that came together and here we are we're on a mission together the rest of our lives and we can't be more happy so you know it's funny because when you think about um the creative process i feel like when we started writing together you have more in you feel like you have more invested in a, in a project. So that's why um, it was a no brainer. It was kind of like, you know, I, I, I don't want someone going out there trying to sound like me, like my voice and my guitar. Um, Cause if I go to a show, I want to throw shit. So, um, so that's, it made the most sense to represent it the way we recorded it, to represent it the, the same way live. And we put a killer band and we started playing right away. Um, we even started playing before the record came out last fall. And we were just getting really good response everywhere we went, which isn't, when you're in an opening situation, it's kind of hard. People are there to see somebody else, never heard of you. But head by head in the audience, you just turn that head and they're like, wow. And by the end of the, our set, we were just, people wanted more. So that's always a really, a really good uh, indication you're doing something right. Amazing, amazing. And since the band started, it's almost a year by now, and you guys are starting the world with your amazing music. So how do you feel about the success of the band? Well, how do we... Go ahead, I didn't hear that question. Yeah, either did I. Yeah, so what I say is like, within the span of a year's time, you guys are so, so storming the world, the whole world around, and your music has been foreign wide now. Everybody started loving your music. So, how do you feel about the success of the band in a very short span of time? Oh, the success of the band. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's been about a year since since we built the band, the touring band. Phil and I've been doing this together long, a little, you know, longer than that. But yeah, it's it how I, we're blessed, man. I mean, for our first tour to be. Uh, as our unit to be with Jeff Tate, you know, and winning over his crowd. And then our next tour to be with Ingve Malm, you know, the shredder, Ingve, and, and winning over his crowd. I mean, it, it's amazing. And uh, we're humbled by it. Um, we don't let it go to our heads. Uh, we want our, we go out every night like we're playing, like we're going to be playing Madison Square Garden. That's our goal. And we take it all in stride and we continue to work hard and write great tunes. And we know the rest will follow. Um, you know, Phil and I met a little later in life. So we don't, it's not, we don't have the luxury of time of if we would have met earlier, but I don't think it would be as good as it is now. And we would be on the trajectory that we are now if we didn't meet at this time in our life. So we're going to do what everybody tells you you can't do, like I've always done my whole life. And we're just going to kick this in the ass and keep growing. And, but yeah, we're very thankful for the success we've had over a year. And it's not going to stop. Wait till you hear this new album. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And uh, uh, like you said, you're never going to stop making music. And do you currently have anything to be released in a, in a few months' time? Do we have anything to be released? Yeah, any single that you're currently working on that you want to be released well, in well, a we... couple of months? hero single in may of this year which uh we're probably going to be doing some other cool stuff with that in the future we'll be playing that on tour and have that available on seat we have a, a collector's uh collector cd of that and then on father's day we released my dad which is a song i wrote from my father that i lost in 16 
um, which is very special and we love. And I know it'll touch people the more it spreads all over the world. Uh, but as I alluded to earlier, we're in the studio and uh, all I can really say is by February of next year, at the latest, uh, that's probably when it will be, we'll have a full length album, but we're taking our time and it's going to kick everybody in the ass when it comes out. So it, it, it's, it's really, really cool. And the movie has uh, three new tunes that nobody's ever heard that'll be coming out as well. And a single off of that, which we'll be playing on uh, tours upcoming here the rest of the year. So. Wonderful. Wonderful. Good. And Kurt and uh, I want to thank you both so much for giving me today this wonderful opportunity to have you on this interview. A real pleasure yeah. to have you guys. We appreciate you and your yeah. smile. We appreciate so, yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful music that you have been giving us for the last one year. I'm looking forward for more amazing music from you both. And uh, thank you so much again for this beautiful music you. that you're giving us. <laughs> Yeah, you, you count on it, man. We're bringing more for you, and we appreciate you sharing us with all your fans and having us. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Phil. A real pleasure to have you, too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wish Take you care. Bye-bye. Take Bye. care, brother. Take care. Bye-bye.